Hey, it's Mike here, and on this beautiful day in which I had to be outside, I want to talk about another deficiency that vegans should now allegedly be afraid of. And that is a vitamin A deficiency, but just for those that are genetically susceptible. Is this a real concern, or is this just another jab at the vegan diet? So let's look at some claims around this vitamin A deficiency issue, take a look at some research, and see if those claims hold up. All right, let's go. A while back, you may remember Roaming Millennial actually pulled this vitamin A deficiency thing out, but the way she presented it was so uncompelling that it probably didn't worry anybody. But recently, I was sent this article by self-proclaimed online health authority, Healthline.com, four reasons why some people do well as vegans, while others fail miserably. It was specifically written by Authority Nutrition, who up until recently when Healthline absorbed them, was largely a low-carb blog, but they are checkmark, evidence-based, so let's see what they have to say. Vitamin A is their very first reason as to why some people are destined to fail on a vegan diet, which might mean it's the most important, who knows. They say, quote, Contrary to popular belief, plant foods don't contain true vitamin A, known as retinol. Instead, they contain vitamin A precursors, the most famous being beta carotene. True, we then convert that beta carotene into retinol, which is why the unit of measurement for vitamin A is retinol activity equivalence instead of just vitamin A. But animal products do contain retinoids such as retinol itself that don't require the same conversion process. But here's the bad news. Several gene mutations can thwart carotenoid conversion, rendering plant foods inadequate as vitamin A sources. If you're really unlucky and you end up with two of these mutations, you will convert carotenoid 69% less effectively. And I love this quote, a less common mutation can reduce conversion by about 90% in people who carry two copies. Less common, so what? Like 20% of people, 30% of these people? No, this is a super rare gene mutation. As of now, it's just a rare mutation that was reported in a case study. And even if you do have this rare mutation, while eating the standard American diet, you will probably still even get orange skin because of the difficulty your body will have clearing the beta carotene out of your bloodstream. But just how common is this? Be very afraid, 45% of people are low responders, 45% of people are probably gonna fail on a vegan diet due to retinol deficiency. Then they claim that this vitamin A effect will eventually be detrimental and that quote, when poor converters go vegan, they can eat carrots until they're orange in the face, literally, without actually obtaining enough vitamin A for optimal health. Really? Okay, let's say that you are a crappy, unlucky converter that converts 69% less. Not that one in a billion, 90% less converter, the 69% less one. Well, according to the National Institute of Health's numbers, just one cup of carrots will get 114% of your daily value of retinol equivalents. Oh my gosh. How about a single sweet potato? 200% of your daily value. If you were one of those super duper crappy converters that only converted 10%, then a sweet potato would still give you 54% of your daily value. This person is just pulling stuff out of their bum. Now this is the point where they really are just spreading lies. Quote, Not surprisingly, the consequences of inadequate vitamin A mirror the problems reported by some vegans and vegetarians. Thyroid dysfunction, night blindness, and other vision issues, impaired immunity, more colds and infections, and problems with tooth enamel can all result from poor vitamin A status. These are all major problems commonly reported by vegans. No, this is just opinion backed by nothing. And then in the next sentence, they throw in four citations so you think it's connected. Nope, none of those four studies even contain the word vegan. So let's see if these are real problems for vegans. Hypothyroidism. From the best data we have in the Adventist studies, vegans had 11% lower rates of hypothyroidism than meat eaters. Vision issues? Well, from the Epic Oxford study, vegans had 40% lower rates of cataracts, which was lower than any dietary group. Increased colds? Impaired immunity? Really? From an anecdotal perspective, which can get out of hand, I've heard so many people say that they get sick half as much or sometimes haven't even been sick since they've been vegan. And I personally haven't missed any filming in my entire channel history or had a loss of voice or anything like that. But let's go to a study. This study put workers on a vegan diet. The result was, quote, the vegan group reported a 40 to 46% decrease in health-related productivity impairments at work and in regular daily activities. 
That means less sick days from having a cold or less family frisbee outings missed from having the swine flu. Go home, vitamin A deficiency. Go home. Moving on, then how come there isn't a widespread vitamin A deficiency epidemic? They say, simple, in the Western world, carotenoids provide less than 30% of people's vitamin A intake, whereas animal foods provide over 70%. If anything, that's a testament to just how little plant foods, healthy vegetables, and things like that, that people in the Western world eat, especially when you go down the list from the NIH and see that these animal products are actually quite far down, even when putting them in the same retinol equivalent units. But certainly with the article scare tactics about these conversion rates, there should be at least an epidemic in vegans, right? Well, do we have any studies measuring the blood levels of vitamin A in vegans anywhere? Here's one. Not the largest study in the world, but it did get blood panels of 200 people, 100 of which were meters, or meat eaters, 50 of which were vegetarian, and 50 of which were vegan. It was nice to see that the B12 deficiency was really low among all groups, not actually statistically significantly different between any of them, including the vegans. The researchers attributed this to vegans having their supplement act together, so good job. Another nutrient that wasn't statistically significantly different between the groups, vitamin A, true blood levels of retinol. From the Healthline article, we would expect that about 45% of these vegans would be forced to fail due to vitamin A deficiency. Clearly not the case. Something like folic acid though, omnivores were a statistically significant 58% deficient, ouch. To be fair though, it does look like vegans need to eat a little bit more zinc. Moving on, I want to take a look at ethnicities and genes. From the Healthline article, you would sort of be led to believe that these gene rates of lower conversion might actually be from us just getting so many animal products that we just didn't even need that beta carotene anymore at all. But from this study, no, it is not the areas of the world with super high animal product consumption. On the contrary, it is some areas of the world like East Asia that have traditionally very high plant consumption. That is where the highest prevalence of these genes is. So it's worth asking the question, did these genes actually develop in the same way that we lost our vitamin C making gene, our ability to make vitamin C? It's still just dangling there broken in our genome because we ate so much vitamin C from plants that we didn't need it. It didn't affect our survival rate to not have it. So is it possible that having a lower conversion rate for vitamin A just didn't even matter because we were eating so much beta carotene from plants? Who knows? Anyway, final point, I know some of you might be thinking, isn't vitamin A a fat-soluble vitamin? Doesn't that mean we need to be pounding back the fat to get as much as we need? No, according to this study, you just need about one-eighth of an avocado's worth of fat to get that vitamin A absorption. In the end, with all this information at hand, I would say that if deficiencies were straws, they would be grasping. That was really bad. But seriously, it's clear that this article was pretending to take an objective tone with why some people do well on a vegan diet and some don't, but then it turned out to just be four reasons why a vegan diet sucks, which were backed by loosely strung together theories that ignored the larger picture on the epidemiological data, but references. They had references though. And I can only cover vitamin A in this video, the other three points, for another time. I have covered K2 a bit. I will link at the end. But I hope you can see that vegans having lower level of all of these diseases that are associated with vitamin A deficiency, and then also not appearing to have a vitamin A deficiency when looking at blood levels, it's clear that it's all BS. But eat sweet potatoes anyway, beta carotene is still an amazing antioxidant. All right, that's it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe. And just a friendly reminder, plantspace.org does still exist, so feel free to go over there, check it out if you haven't already. All right, I will see you next time. Thank you for watching.